This is yet another tragic loss of life. As people try to escape war, oppression and persecution to give their children a better future, only to be abandoned at sea or lost in desert sands. The population of forcibly displaced people in 2014 was 51 million, and images of people living in tents and makeshift shelters of refugee camps are becoming all too familiar. And this is what we're here to discuss in Parliament today. We're putting in place it's a scandal, lady. Uh, poor children would still be alive if, if their parents hadn't been so selfish, taking babies on a, a stupid, dangerous journey to Europe. 1% of the 51 million people find their way to Britain. Pakistan, Iran, Lebanon, Jordan and Turkey are the world's top five hosts of refugees, according to the UN. The UN reports that refugees will often choose the shortest route to safety. Afghans cross to Pakistan, Zimbabweans to South Africa, Somalis to Kenya and Syrians to Lebanon. Latest statistics suggest the population of Lebanon has increased by 40% through refugees from Syria. And this is exactly what the UKIP party fears. Every Tom, Dick and Harry coming over here, taking our jobs, our houses, our benefits. The services can't cope. How am I going to pay more tax? It really is a bloody scandal. All right. All right. I'm not stirring much, you know. Oh. All right, if it's so urgent, why don't you dial 999? Who is it? It's me, Arthur. Oh, it's you. to come in. You're late. How are you? What have you been up to? Just listening to the news. Whole world seems to be knocking on our door. One of these days, the island will be so full, it'll sink like one of them boats. As people smugglers attempt these perilous waters in vessels which are, for the most part, completely unseaworthy. Over to you, John. I brought you a plant as a present, Arthur. And you've got some mail. And I've got some cake for a cuppa. Oh no, I don't want someone to come in. I just don't answer the door. So why don't we close the bloody door? Is that why you took so long to come to the door? Because you didn't want me to come in. No. You, you're, you're a good bloke. You. You work hard for a living, not like. Not like them who. Come over here and say what they want. I'll tidy up a bit. I'll put the kettle on. I can't understand them when they arrive. Because they don't speak English. And they don't understand us. There's no point talking to you when you are so rude and arrogant. So what will you do when there aren't enough people prepared to do my job? What's that? It means more help will need to be brought in from overseas. I should not come knocking on my door. I don't understand the word they're saying. Worse. They won't be able to make a good cover. <laughs> Here's your tea. Can't see if they're black or white. No, no, they don't belong here. Your precious NHS would collapse if it wasn't for the doctors, nurses, porters from overseas. They help keep it afloat. Nonsense. Their countries collapsed because they came over here. And then we, we sent boatloads of foreign aid over to them to help with their sickness and health. It doesn't make any sense to me. But most of them would rather stay at home. To build a future with family and friends in a familiar culture. They have to face wars that they didn't choose. They're imprisoned, they're persecuted, they're executed by some tin pot dictator propped up by the West just because he doesn't agree with their politics, their faith or even their sexual orientation. Wave after wave of foreign faces 
coming over here all babbling in foreign languages. What's the fortune to detain them? Because they're here illegally. Arthur. What about the children? Sent back to no homes, no shelter, no water, no clothes, no doctors. A lot of them thrown into overcrowded prisons where they're never heard from again. Do you really blame them for running away? I don't care about the children. Well, what's foreign aid is for? Where'd all that money go from Red What's It Day? Red Nose. What? Red Nose Day. Well, there you are, you see. Always sticking our noses in other people's business. You know, if we listened more, then we'd be able to give people what they really need instead of what we think they want. No one listens to me. If it wasn't for you coming round and seeing me for every day God sends, nobody would care for me. This government. Bah! They do anything for some foreign, coloured family. Would you love your neighbours if they were coloured? I don't love myself, never mind my bloody neighbour. Well then, we'll have to get you to learn to love yourself so that you can love others. <laughs> That'll be a miracle. You know, Jesus did a lot of those for people. Yeah, sounding religious. We spend so much time, money and energy loving strangers with no love left for neighbours. Strangers are neighbours too. Maybe. My neighbours are strangers. Very strange. <laughs> they tell me that they grow potatoes in the front garden. Front gardens for flowers, not bloody vegetables. Okay, Arthur. I can see you're in one of your angry moods today. Anger? Let me tell you about anger. When a bloody terrorist th throws a bomb into a crowd of British citizens who are minding their own bloody business in the deserts of Aden in 1963. That's when my wife, Edith, was murdered by those bastards. And I lost my eyes. And I lost my heart too. I can tell you about anger. I'm really sorry about that. I didn't know. <clears throat> um, how about if I just I'll clear up and uh, bring you some cake through? <laughs> yeah? That's the spirit. You're a true Brit. <laughs> Shall I turn this telly off for you, Arthur? I'm sure yeah. you've seen enough news for one day. Yeah, go ahead. Telly does all the talking, I do all the listening. <laughs> you've not stopped talking since I got here, Arthur, and I'm still listening to your rants. Oh. It's your job, isn't it? You're not here because you're a friend. It's because you get paid to talk to some old Blind bloke. There's no use to anyone. When you're not here, I, I talk to my dead wife. You, Arthur, sir, are a very grumpy old man. <sighs> you know, maybe you'd understand things differently if you could see. 
Hmm. Maybe I could see the difference between green trees and blue skies and be able to look at my aging face in a mirror but my ears and my eyes now and sometimes I can even smell fear in the air <laughs> okay so what can you smell now well my vicar would say it was love <laughs> but I think it's your aftershave <laughs> you know maybe your vicar is right you know I'm still a stranger to you but right now I'm your neighbor so what so I share my love with you. Love? Yes. Godly love. <sighs> they don't put that in your pay packet. You're getting a bit religious, aren't you? I've got a mouth too. I know the sweetness of food. <sighs> oh, once a kiss. And a voice to speak, if anyone will listen. I've done nothing but listen since I got here, Arthur. So, how good are you at listening? I listen enough to know you want to preach to me about love. But I don't love myself. Would you mind if I touch your face? A head that has ideas just like mine. Ears that hear like me. Nose. A bit different to mine. A mouth that speaks a language that I understand. I know that from what I hear, touch and smell, that you are just like me. <laughs> There's a part of my story that can't be seen through your hands. And it will always be hidden because you, you can't see. Oh, well, you tell me. I, I, I can't tell if you got a happy smile or an angry scowl. Or I, I, I don't remember what a teardrop feels like. I'm sorry. But I'm sorry. Did I make you weep? That's okay. You touched a part of my story when you felt my tears. I didn't mean to make you cry. Well, now you know that I cry. And you know that I don't need eyes to see. Turkey are the world's top five hosts of refugees according to the UN. These bloody refugees again. Brown and black bastards want to come here. Arthur? What are you doing? We really need to talk. Why? You still don't see, do you? What do you mean? I'm black. Black? Black. You mean you've been coming here for six months and now you're telling me you're black? Black. Yes, Arthur, I am a black man. Well, your voice sounds white. And what exactly does colour sound like? Like the place people come from. 
So, all right then, what colour does Greek or, 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 or Polish or German sound like? Like people who don't belong here. Wait, wait, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm just about to get you some cake. I'm going to need a knife for that cake. No. Not a knife. Break the cake like the vicar when he's breaking bread. We come only to your glory And we confess your God alone Your God alone At your altar lay our fears For we know you're present and you're here Again, to us you shown Oh, such a great gift For mercy's sake and not our own It's of this greatness we attend For all to hear and to know your righteousness May your king where did he come from? A beautiful place in Africa. Hmm. Where the palm trees grow tall and strong. We used to break the fruit and give it and share it. Just like a... Just like communion from a broken body. You can't resist the faith talk, can you? I hope in what I cannot see. You want to see what you hope for. I hope to see heaven one day. Hmm. We had it in Africa. A lush garden with no fence, animals sharing the land, children oh, running barefoot free as far as the eye could see. Why did you leave them? Some people came. Some white men came. They didn't see heaven. So they stripped our land. They stole our wealth. They raped our women. They corrupted and murdered our children. So here we are. Do you think you'll find heaven here? Well, I'm here with my wife and my child. It's strange, but we are making a new home. So yes, even here can be heaven. How did you get here? We fled, we walked for weeks through scorching desert that burnt our feet. Our poor children wailed for food. And then there was that swaying leaking, nauseating boat journey across stormy seas. You came on one of those boats, you, you could have died on that journey. True, but if we'd stayed, we'd have died. Now, we have a life to look forward to. I don't believe this. You've been looking after me for six months. <laughs> <laughs> First you smile, now you're laughing. 
This isn't the grumpy old man I thought I knew. It's a miracle. Me being here is a miracle. You laughing is another. No, it's a miracle. I, I've never seen things like this before. What, you, you can see? Yes. Yes, uh, not the colour of your skin. Not, not my face in a mirror, but a, a bigger picture. So what can you see? I can see things I wouldn't have seen if I hadn't been blinded. I would have seen your skin and, and not you. I've never, I've never hugged a bloody man in my life, and now I'm hugging a black man! <laughs> Look at this, Edith! You laugh off so much! But you know, I, I really do understand why you get so angry when people like me seem to get so much when you feel so neglected. We've helped each other to see things better. I'm not going to tell the vicar what I've seen. I've seen the truth. After all these years. of a bomb threat at Heathrow. People are questioning whether our borders need to be tightened. Corbynites are suggesting that the way forward would be to actually have an inclusive policy that would not encourage people to turn into terrorists. David Cameron is all for pragmatic compassion and hard line defence. <laughs> rubbish, rubbish. And in other news, Victoria Beckham is wearing extremely high heel. Her muscles in her feet are now completely contorted. That is the latest news. And in other news, in Made in Chelsea, a new rich person is going to be going out with another rich person. Let us look at the Houses of Parliament, this grand, grand monument, monolith of imperial power. Look, look, the Queen goes there. <laughs> <laughs> the weather today will be British weather. It will generally be pants. Most people want to leave this country to go on holiday, but that's bad for the environment. What are we to do? When will the sun come this way? Oh, <laughs>